Ahoy out there, Frankie Day, back again, YouTube. This evening, YouTube fellas, uh, I've got two new kits that I bought I'm going to add to my stash. And uh, I got my naval pension check in today, so I went to the commissary, got a few groceries. Supposed to have a big storm coming in by tomorrow. Plus, getting worse from 8 to 12 inches of snow. I was all sick and tired of seeing snow. I'll tell you, it drives me bug house. And, uh, so therefore, folks, I'd like to make a couple of fast 10 bucks reviews of these kits right here I bought. And uh, these are all new kits. They've all been just newly released. You know, they're coming out with some good stuff this year. So 2014 will be a good year for all of us good modelers here. So anyway, uh, I'd like to share with you two of these uh, two kits I got today. I went down there to my favorite hobby shop. Don went down there. He flagged me over. Frank, I got some... I got some, uh, some new kits that came in today. So I went in there and uh, looked around, gathered. I want them too, so I, I snatched them both and and uh, we'll start out with this one here. This is the first one. This is the Ravel of Germany uh, 148 scale War One fighter. The Bristol Brist Fit or Bristol Fighter, the F2B. Uh, this kit here, guys, is a Excellent kit. I mean, I looked at the instructions of this thing and the parts, and uh, it will go through it in this here video. And uh, this is going to be a wonderful kit. I'm going to add this to my stash. Maybe down the road there might be a group build that came up that they can use the uh, War One aircraft. So these are actually future builds for group builds coming up. So bigger the stash. The biggest group build, so it's like me every day. I'm getting new kits every day, so it's fine with me. Okay, this is kit number one, and uh, we'll discuss the uh, the parts contents and the uh, and the average uh, and the review of the kit itself. So we'll go move on to the next kit. And uh, I'm I'm never too keen on choppers. I like helicopters, especially the old ones. A long blue chopper I did on on Freddy Duarte's uh, Desert Storm group build. Oh, uh, that was probably the first chopper I've ever built. Oh, Lord have mercy. What? 50 plus years, maybe even more. A long time ago. I think the last chopper I built it was an old Ravel uh, Chickasaw. I think it was a Sikorsky S21. And uh, I haven't seen that kit since the last time I built a chopper. So anyway, folks, uh, this one here is my new my Ravel. I don't know how long it's been out. It's probably been out for a while, but it's it's new to me. I've never seen this before. This is a CH-34. I see a lot of these in Vietnam. The Tache, the 3rd Marine Division. We had a bunch out there. Uh, right at the Palon uh, uh, Air Force Base out there. They had a Marine Base out there, too. That has full of these also. I see a lot of these in Da Nang. We had them out there. And also an Antoy. And Peku. Yeah, a lot out there also. And... Uh, it's a good chopper. This is actually was the the, the, uh, the successor to the Sosorsky S21, and uh, the successor to this is the CH45, uh, which is the Jolly Green Giant. Uh, this is 148 scale, and uh, we'll make an inbox review of this. Then we'll move on to the uh, Bristol Fighter. Okay, folks. Uh, uh, 148 scale. It's a good sized chopper, and uh, the only significance to this chopper right here is this is a chopper that came off the OPH USS Okinawa. I was on the USS Okinawa for eight months for that transfer to the USS Ashtabula AO-51. Now, it was, a, it was actually a landing helo chopper carrier. Now they call it LPDs nowadays, but this is this flown off the USS Okinawa, and, and this is a, a Liberty Bell capsule which Gus Grissom played uh, which uh, blew the hatch and got pretty well singled out over that so anyway this chopper here is, is, is taking up a Liberty Bell out of, out of the drink because she was taking on water so I guess uh, Grissom uh, really kind of freaked out a little bit and blew the hatch he wasn't supposed to but he blew the hatch here. but anyway um, that's the only significant history part about the CH-34 CH-34 were used all throughout Vietnam that's what they use most of most of these choppers were good for, and the Jolly Green Giants were actually well. Jolly Green Giants can carry a lot of armor too, 
But these things here are going to carry so much, mostly personnel. And use them as gunships too as well. They had side gunners on there. And uh, sometimes they had a 7.62 minigun on the uh, cargo on the cargo uh, slide door on the side of the right side of the fuselage. Okay, enough chatter on that, guys. We'll get into the uh, yeah. inbox review of the kit itself. Removing the box top. Move over here temporarily. And uh, we'll start out with the instructions, the decals, and work to the parts. Okay, boys. <coughs> Starting out with the, uh, the instructions. Instructions here are, are nothing more, just regular instructions. Do's and don'ts, all bilingual. Has parts list. Tells you all the parts. It's all bilingual as well. Starting out with a few fuselage interiors. And uh, also, I think uh, on the previous page before the, the uh, parts list was included on there, there's a col color call out too. It tells you the, uh, the, the color of the chopper, which these are all all drab. And there's different uh, forms of all drab out there, folks. And uh, here's the color uh, over here. I'm getting all cockeyed over here. Here's all your color charts here that show on the uh, instructions. So you guys get the picture. They're all OD. All, all of drab. Every time, everyone I've seen of these are all, all of drab. So make sure you use a three uh, FS three forty eighty seven shade. Use Model Master because it's a lot more lighter, a lot more a tinge yellower than uh, than the regular uh, ninety seven uh, type of olive drab they use. You know, which was really a darker, almost like a green drab. But uh, these we have a very very yellowish uh, olive drab. So your FS three forty eighty seven is your um, is your chip number for the for the paint schedule on this? Okay, getting back to the, uh, the instructions right here. It shows the chopper, shows the placement of the stencils, and um, yeah. has a, a color chart here with which signifies the color of the chopper, which is the black bo this box of beer signifies all the drab and gives you the uh, the color federal federal standard uh, color chip number on there, and. Um, Check on the next page here. I really haven't looked at the structures that much, but what I've seen them, they're pretty well done. Okay, folks, right here gives you uh, it gives you the the, the, the squad and everything. What these choppers were actually from. You get the APHD, which is off the uh, Bruno, which is means um, that's off of the uh, uh, the sister ship to the Okinawa. You got the Capitan on then, which is the uh, another sister ship of the Okinawa class, and uh, these are all OD overall, all the drab. And you got a yellow tail band on here. The rings are all white, and uh, maybe that with the instructions. Now we we'll get to the good stuff. These reveal kits getting better, and better all the time, guys. I tell you, all these new killing kits coming out. They're uh, they're very gorgeous. Right here is a decal. I guess these decals right here give you different versions of the chopper. The chopper comes with two options. I guess is more or less the, the squadron they belong to. Actually, which ship they're on. And uh, the decals seem to be. They feel like they're pretty much on a thick side, so it'll take a lot of um, decal solver to get it down, so it'll make it confirm pretty well to your your panels. Okay, uh, well now we'll get to the uh, the parts. The kit comes in um, a big large bag, and this bag of screws right here is uh, all each individually uh, bagged, I believe. Yes, they are. So each one of these sprues are all wrapped individual in a clear bag. And they're all fitted inside this large bag, as most of them are. I like the packing these kits nowadays. I mean, they 
it sure eliminates a lot of breakage too. Because years ago, when you had you bought the little Lavelle monogram kits, time they get slammed around in transit and in warehouses like that, parts get busted. Those poor modelers have got to pay the price. Okay, removing the large bag here. Put it aside because he's going to go right back into it when I get done. It's molded in a uh, very, very, very light white gray plastic and dark gray plastic. A dark gray plastic right here, this is probably all your interior parts. That's these, all these parts right here probably go to your, uh, your, your cargo floor, your cargo deck, and also your flight deck too on these on this choppers because this chopper had a two deck layout. You had your flight deck and also you had your cargo utility deck too, which these choppers had. And up here, which is very nice, they got they got benches right here, which have cargo hammocks on there. They actually they're positioned on the port side of the fuselage facing the sliding uh, exit entry door on the right side of the fuselage. So all these right here are interior parts right here. They're quite defined. The detail on these are very, very excellent, superb. Put that aside. Sprue number two is the clear parts. Clear parts are uh, from what I can see, they they can use a color future on them. They're not really the greatest, not compared to the parts off that. Uh, that PA Super Cub by Ravel. But they're good though. These are very, very, uh, you got raised panel lines on here, which makes masking very easy to achieve. And uh, got the rest of the window. The, the clear parts are not really bad, but like I say, to be honest with you, if you got Johnson's Future, you know, that'd be a good, a good suggestion to go ahead and apply it on there, because it could use it. And there, these are, even scale from 1 to 10, I'll give you an 8. So these are, whatever well, it's optional. If you're going to use a uh, future or not, it's up to what your discretion. But to me, I just thought they are is good enough for me. Okay, speed number 3 right here contains the uh, rotor blades. And you got your, you got your engine cover right here. Which fits the nose of the ship itself, the chopper, and uh, you got your tires on here, and you got your side of your exit and entry door right here. It looks like it's functional; it slides. And uh, small parts probably go on the ex probably exterior of the aircraft itself. And uh, lastly, this brood. This here didn't have uh, any uh, plastic bag in it. This only one that didn't have the plastic bag in it. So I guess the big bag made up for the plastic by having the individually wrapped. So this is the fuselage, the main structure of the chopper itself. This thing is very beautiful, guys. The lines, as you can see, the lines are all recessed in. Excellent for washes. Excellent. So when I finish this chopper in OD, I'm going to give it a nice good wash. That'll bring out the fidelity of the recessed panels on here. And uh, the detail of this thing is very superb. Now look at, the, look at the inside of it. You can see all the detail molding here. The raised lining here. All the raised lines, the detail of the ribs, and how, they, how, they, that's how the chopper is constructed. And um, the interior detail is very, very well executed on here. I mean... To sum it up, that's an excellent kit. You can't go wrong with this. I mean, uh, I, I'm pretty happy with it. I'm not too much in the choppers, but they hold their significant piece in aviation history because they're airplanes themselves. And uh, I know the CH-34 was a very heavy-duty workhouse. We, I see a lot in Vietnam because that's where they, they like the Huey. UH-16, they, that's how they earn their fame and everything and, and what they can do. I mean, they're very beautiful well-designed aircraft, and they served very well. And uh, C-34, I can remember that C-34 C was probably, it was, was stricken for the United States Army probably about as late as 1964. And uh, after 64 came in, it came out with a, with a Sea King. And uh, 
Just read to, uh, no, well, let me take you that. I think it's about around 1968. That's when he quit using the uh, the CH-34s. I think because uh, he used a lot of Jolly Greens and, and also Sea Kings that they used. So they lived a pretty good lifespan. They they came they entered service as, as late as 1953, and uh, so they they've been there for a while. Okay, boys, we'll move on to the next uh, inbox review. I'll get back and uh, put these uh, screws back in the big bag, and uh, take care of that later. We'll get along with the uh, inbox review. Okay, guys, this is the good one here. I always say the good one for the last. Okay, back to the uh, Ravello Germany Bristol F2B Brisfit Bristol Fighter. I bought this. Uh, it had a price tag on here listed for thirty-five dollars. It's U.S. dollars, guys. Uh, thirty-five dollars and twenty-five cents with my PMS discount. I'm being an old fart in the wind senior citizen. I got. I got this thing here for a whopping 25 bucks. I'm very happy. The box opens up very easily from the end, and the parts will follow as you pull them out. So with the parts right there, we'll start with instructions and decals. Okay, boys, starting out with the instructions. It tells the history of the aircraft. It's all bilingual instructions. This is a Velo Germany kit, so we all are pretty familiar with the instructions, what you're going to face when you open them up. It tells do's and don'ts and why's and everything else. And it has the symbols over here, the color call outs of the, of the model itself. And the uh, instructions are all, you got to. On page three of the instructions, you got parts list right there. If you doubt, you know what parts what, you can look at it on there to verify the part. So you can add it to the construction. As all airplanes, it starts out with the internal needs, such as your cockpit flooring and joysticks, rudder pedals, engine radiators, top rain straps. You name it, it's there. It starts out there and it works its way to the uh, top wings. Now, the uh, there's lots and lots of small parts on this kit here, so I would not advise that the novice or a child is younger than 14 years of age to tackle this model. This model has some very minute, fine, small parts. And they're very, very fragile. It don't take much for them to bust or lose. So you got to exercise with care of those parts. But in the overall perspective, this is a very excellent kit. Very excellent. I think it's a lot more better than a rodent kit. I've got the rodent kit that I built, and I wasn't too impressed with it. It was had its share of fit issues, but it was an excellent kit, though. This one here is miles better. So I highly recommend getting this kit. If all you World War One buffs out there, or like add another World War One fighter plane to your collection, this kit's a must. And uh, it shows all the parts. You can see all those parts right there, folks. Nothing new for me here. This is eye candy for me. On the following pages back here, it gives you a, a rigging diagram right here. It tells you how to, to do your rigging and everything on it. It shows you the steps. A rigging a biplane, especially in this scale perspective, there's, all, there's, there's, there's three ways of doing the rigging. The easy way, the hard way, and the right way. The easy way is is use fuse wire, stretch it out to stress till it's completely stiff. Take a pair of dividers, you measure from one strut to the other, you snip it off, use your glue, and that's that. That's that's the uh, easy way. The other way is use a small drill like a one thousandth making little holes like that you can feed sprue through it 
my stretch of sprue. You can tighten the sprue while, while the glue is drying. You can move that sprue over more to take the warps out of it. And the other way, the best way, is use monofilament. The monofilament is very easy to use. You gotta use ACC glue for that attaching your rig. You make sure when you get your wing struts run on glued to your top or your bottom wings. And once they're once it's set, you take the top wing and make sure the top wing while the while the struts are still still wet, make sure that the top wing is aligned with all the struts. And let it dry overnight. Then you remove the top wing, then you go ahead and use your monofilament. The monofilament can just be looped over from corner to corner of your struts and touched up with paint because it's new. That's the best way. That's the way I'm going to do it on this one here. Time consuming, tedious, but very effective. And just like like Pete says, no biplane is is complete without its rigging. That's the ultimate challenge we deal with these little dudes. But anyway, in the back of the instructions right here, it has, a, has the, uh, the paint schedule, so evidently no options is this kit. The only option is the rigging. That's the only option is the kit. But here's the color. It's all buff. Use a military uh, World War One uh, green color they used. And uh, I think it's kind of a khaki color or a beige color they use under. Probably a buff more than anything. But this is a dandy of a model. It, it's a must. Like I say, I would I'd like to exercise one more time again. Don't let a, a, a child under 14 years of age without parental guidance try to tackle a kit like this because the attention span of that child trying to build something like this is not going to last very long and it also be a waste of money. So, exercise got to be uh, exercised there. Okay, guys, come back to the decals. The decals are excellent. They, they're very thin. A lot more thinner than the... Uh, on my chopper right there, but here they are here. They're very nice decals. You got your stencils at the bottom here. You got your ramblers on top of there, and you got your top of your your fin. Very great decals. Now we'll get to the parts. Okay, guys, this kit here, you will not find them individually bagged like the other ones does. This is a Revilla Germany kit. And uh, it's all, all these sprues contains uh, one, two, you have four sprues wrapped up in one big bag right here. So, I bust that bag out. The fuselage is very detailed. You can see the stitching of the canvas across the larger rods. As these things were built, I've got the Sapir motor, which is very, very detailed, and uh, the kit comes with a four-blade pop, as most biscuits are, are are known for. That pops here somewhere, over in this area here. Anyway, guys, this is a uh, a very wonderful kit. All the control surfaces can be uh, built in different uh, different positions. Up now, ailerons can be either, either in the attitude of being uh, banking, or they can be in neutral. The rudder can be placed right or left. The elevators can be just down, as gravity allows it. Uh, it's a wonderful plane. I can tell by looking at, at the construction of it and the, and, the, and the effort they made, this thing is miles better than the rodent kit. And a lot cheaper too. So right there, folks, that kind of concludes uh, my inbox review of what's in my stash. And uh, so I'm going to add these to my stash, and uh, perhaps down the road uh, a group build will arise using one of these two uh, aircraft I just got today. So uh, I'll probably go to the highway shot tomorrow and get a couple more kits. I saw some down there. I seen a. I seen a Revell Germany uh, 132nd scale Junkers 87. I think I'll pick it up tomorrow. I went and told Don to hold it for me, so yeah. highly likely I'll get that tomorrow. Uh, the kit list uh, seventy dollars. I'm get this one for thirty. So this is a pretty good hobby shop I go to. I do want a little business there. 
Okay, guys, this is the longest I've been on the video in a long, long, long time. I got almost 25 minutes on this. Uh, so, anyway, it's time to get off right here. I'm getting a little tired. And uh, so, uh, I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in. May God bless. Happy modeling. I'm very glad you guys like my videos. And I just got them posting my uh, my my build number three, the Aero Newman's Trainer Aircraft Group build. And uh, my super got my Super Cub going, so... In a couple of good weeks, I had that thing done, and uh, I gotta get my Arizona going. It's calling on me. Okay, guys, time for me to get out of here. Time to bail out right now, and uh, I gotta hit the part sack and get some sleep. I'm getting tired, and um, I'd like to thank everybody again for tuning in, and uh, may God bless. And uh, stay tuned tomorrow for video number two of my uh, build number three of Aaron Newman's uh, trainer aircraft group build, featuring my PA18 Super Cub. I'll have video number two of that uh, with the cockpit assembly being all painted and done. So I'm out of here, boys. I'm gonna go home and get some skill. I'm gonna go back up top side and get some sleep, and I'll catch you all tomorrow. Bye, boys. T take care. Carry on.